Wake up in the morning feeling like I Salutations to you and yours. Welcome to a Monday. The date is November 25th, 2024. Hey, Logan. Hey, Kira. What up? I have a question for you. Right now? Yeah. What up? I think that um, this is interesting behavior exposed by uh, a couple of my gal pals. Mm. So I roll with a musical theater loving crew, as you can imagine. Yeah, I can. And we're all fired up about the Wicked movie, right? Sure, sure. We really want to see it. And so I, I, you know, I got the group text going. I said, um, you know, girlies, when are we going to see it? Yeah. And two of them were like, I'm already seeing it opening day. But, nice. but obviously I'm good, I'm down to see it multiple times. Mm-hmm. So just let, you know, let me know. Both of them said this. And I'm like, okay, we know that we're going to love it. But would you feel comfortable committing to seeing a movie twice in the theaters before you saw it the first time? Like, how do you know it's worthy of seeing it in, a, in the theater twice before you've ever seen it? I'm tr- I think that's crazy. Yeah, I guess I don't know of a movie that I can say that I would do that to. But also, like, this is a t- totally different type of movie. Yeah. Like, you know what it's about. You, you've you seen the musical. You but kn- you don't know you're going to love it. Like, love it. See it twice in the movie theater. Love it. Yeah, and I guess the, 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 it doesn't matter for your friends. They're just saying that they'll go with you to support you. Right. No, but they were, they were coming at it like... No, I'm going to love it so much. I already know I'm going to love it. So I will see it multiple times in theaters. Yeah, I guess I can't. No, there, to answer your question simply, no, there's not one single movie that I can say going into it, I knew I would watch twice. That's how I feel. You got to see it before committing. Right. Going to the theater now is a big whole thing. Yeah. Popcorn's but, but, in, as much as a mortgage. I, I'm already walking that back, though, because you know what? If, if I knew, for example, um, like Miracle on Ice. Right, mm-hmm. you know the the hockey movie that I'm I, referring to. I do. You love that movie. It, but it, like knowing the, if I saw a trailer for that movie and I know what's going to happen and I know that I'm going to love that, mm-hmm. if I never saw that movie, that's a movie, for example, that I would be like, yeah, I'll see that twice. I already know I will. Mm, but you already know you love it, like because you've already seen. It. Yeah, it's true. Hindsight 2020. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I don't flip and know your friends are crazy. <laughs> that's what I think too. Yeah, they, right. That's what we were trying to get to. Let's this just time. start this week with agreeing with you. It'll be an easier week for me. You're right. <laughs> Right, Kira, you're right. Don't you don't you know that's the way I roll? So um, thank you. I'm glad we had that talk. In a few minutes, we're going to get to voicemails. Are they totally pointless, or do they still serve a purpose in this world? We shall get into that in less than ten on 97.5 WOKQ, number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. It's Kira. It's Logan. It's the morning. And we were just talking about a message that we got from Heather from Rochester on our 97.5 WOKQ app. The synopsis of it was basically asking, are voicemails a thing of the past? And uh, Logan said that he leaves voicemails in certain situations. He's certainly not against yeah, the, uh, very the institution. Few. Yeah, if I'm just catching up with someone, I'm not leaving a voicemail. You know, I'll text him, hey, shoot, you know, shoot me a call. I would like to catch up. But if I have an inf- something that I can tell you and it will be the end of a conversation in a voicemail, I'll absolutely leave it. Mm -hmm. I'm against pointless voicemails. Like, hi Kira, it's mom. It's 3.30 on Tuesday. Call me back. Because I will just see a missed call and call you back anyway. There's no information in that voicemail. Fair enough. Feels Feels a little pointless. However, I did come out hard and fast against voicemails when we started talking about this. I thought about it a little bit. Yeah. And uh, walk it back. I like voicemails for nostalgic reasons, right? I still have voicemails from my Bubby, and uh, she's no longer here. And what a gift it is to be able to hear her voice. I wouldn't be able to do that if she wasn't a voicemail lever. That's a good point. You know what else voicemails are good for? Huh? Hey, I'm available between this time and this time. Call me back. Nice. Because that's that's a that's a huge thing. It's like. You know, you call someone like, all right, they'll call me back. But what if they call me back between two and three? I have a meeting between two and three. Mm -hmm. That's a long text message to send too. Leave a voicemail. I suppose you're right. I suppose there's a point there. I probably would send a text. You have completely flipped your script. For that, I'd send a text. I'm available between two and three. All right, 603-749-0975. We're wondering where you stand on the whole leaving a voicemail of it all. 603-749-0975. Random caller who wants to chime in. We do have this $50 gift card to Kittery Trading Post. 
post that we'd love to give to you. 603-749-0975. WOKQ, what's your name? Where are you from? Brandon Rochester. All right, Brandon, what do you think? I think voicemail is very important because if you hit the ignore button, people know it. But if you let it go to voicemail, then you can ignore them and get away with it. Yeah, I love that. That is, that is a pretty good point. Are you doing that a lot? Um, I plead the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's leaving you voicemails the most often in your life? Uh, bill collectors. <laughs> bill collectors. Mm. Yeah, for me, it's it's it's, it's uh, like businesses uh, that I'm working with, whether it be on my yeah. home or, or like yeah. when I was looking for a car, stuff like that. Well, during the election, it was all spam from them. But of course, but of course. You know who's leaving me voicemails at least once a week to the point that I had to block their number? CVS. The automated voicemails that are telling yeah, me that I my get- prescription is four days from being filled. You know what I mean? Yeah, but don't you need that information? No, it's it's to an unnecessary. It's over communicating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sad part is now they've been figuring that out and leaving text messages for everybody. I know. I know they find you one way or another. Well, they have to communicate with right. you. No, some most of it is unnecessary. It's horrible. Well, thank you for the call, Brandon. I hope you have a great day and I hope if we ever call you, you don't uh, give us the old you know what button. <laughs> Never for you guys. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> See you, brother. Have a good weekend. Yeah, have a good one. You guys. too, man. Peace. Ah. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Okay, our question for you. How do you feel about voicemails? Do you feel like they're unnecessary? Do you feel like you need them in certain circumstances? 603-749-0975. Hi, Dawn. You're on with Kira and Logan in the morning. How's everything? Um, fine. Okay, cool. So do you have a passionate opinion around leaving voicemails? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. When, when do you and when don't you? When I do, if it's important, I'll leave it. If it's not, I won't. What do you categorize as important? If it's an emergency, like if someone's in the hospital or something. That's a great question. That kind of ch- that, that makes me think of something. I don't know if I leave emergency information over a voicemail. I think I got to get someone on the phone for that. 100% I agree. That's a really good, like, jump off question. But, like, if they don't answer, then you can leave the voicemail. Uh, so, like, for example, let, let, let's let let's pick an example. Like, if my dad has a heart attack and he's going to be going to the hospital, I don't think I want to hear that in a voicemail. I don't, I don't, I, I think, I think I'd rather hear my mom say, Logan, I need you to call me back. There's an emergency going on. I think, I don't know, I, I, I'm, i like, spilling my thoughts as I'm thinking of them right now. How would you feel about a text message with that information? With the specific information? Do you not want that? This is a terrible scenario. To this day, I still have a cassette with a voicemail on it when I had an answer machine back in 95 when my mom passed away. And I still have my brother's voice on that saying your mom passed away. I'm so sorry. Is that something that you not like to have but you kind of like, does it bring you comfort? Is it a keepsake? It is. I kept it. I still have that little cassette to this day Mm -hmm. with his voice on it. Well, I'm happy that you have that. And thanks for calling in and and giving us more to think about. (laughs) You're welcome. We hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for making time for us this morning. Oh, I will. Thank you. You feeling feeling good? good? We are. The good stuff is brought to you by Merchants Auto. 1,000 vehicles, 26 acres, merchantsauto.cars. So two stories for the price of one. The first one takes place in Watertown, Massachusetts. So this woman was walking along, like downtown Watertown, and she looked down in her engagement ring and the diamond was gone. Oh, boy. And that's tragic all on its very own, but it was a family heirloom oh, ring. Terrible. In her family for generations. So she was really upset. Yeah, yeah. And she's like retracing her steps. And then it was kind of a ding, ding, ding moment that she felt like it might have fallen into one of those public recycling bins that they have on the sidewalk. Stop. What do you do? So she was pretty much coming to terms with the fact that it gone but she was like i have to at least try sure so she called the town she got in touch with the (laughs) recycle whoa sorry are you all right bless me thank you bless you that's if you're sneezing on the air you're gonna sneeze no less than 30 times today Kara knows it's gonna be a sneezy day for logan gonna be a sneezy day so she got in touch with watertown massachusetts recycling chief his name is matt 
And um, they met. Oh, oh I'm sorry. My I'm God. sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going. And they met up and they started digging through their recycling bin. Yeah, yeah. And she's getting really defeated. And he's like, he's like positive the whole time. He's like, you wouldn't believe what we find for people. Like, don't give up hope. Like, yeah, yeah. this guy is like a ray of freaking sunshine. And then, show enough. Positive words became positive actions. They found this teensy weensy diamond in the recycling bin. How long bin. did it take? Do you have any clue? N- it doesn't say. I just can't imagine how long. I mean, like, it, I don't know when I would throw the towel in. Yeah, it seems I, like they stuck with it. Like, yeah, there were moments I wanted to give up. I feel like after about 30 minutes, it's almost like, all right, we're looking for a needle in a haystack here. Literally. But, yeah, they found it, and the story got shared on um, on Facebook, and then people started fi- um, piling on, like, Matt's the man. He helped me find this when I lost it. Like oh, wow. he's like guy's known for? He's like a hero. He's like huh. a town hero. Cool. So we love to hear that. Um, my next story is about Swifties. So this guy named Mike... Uh, loves a girl named Callie, and Callie is a die-hard Swifty fan. Okay, um, but like obviously they're not Oprah, so they only had um, they only had plans to see the Eras tour once in Pittsburgh, like sure. that's where they live. And then they kind of traveled around and hung out in the parking lot and sang along like a lot of people do. Oh, my God. People do that. I, I know, but I just can't imagine having the time. I know. I know. Nor the dedication. So a news station, like, found out their dedication around this this uh, Eras tour and her love of Taylor Swift. So they're like, you deserve to see her one more time. Sent them to Toronto um, cool. on Friday. Nice. And um, Tay Tay's up on stage playing Love Story. And that is when Mike slipped on Callie's wrist a friendship bracelet and said, asked her to marry him. Wow. So was this part of his plan? I think it became part of his plan when they found out they were going to another wow. era's yeah, tour yeah, yeah. stop. And then when Tay-Tay sang, marry me, Juliet, he dropped to his Jogger. knee. Yeah. Seen that a time or two. Have you? Yeah. When have you been to a Taylor Swift concert? I don't have to go to a Taylor Swift concert to see what people put on the internet, just like you saw this story. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. The internet is a place for everybody. Uh, so that happened, and I actually didn't see if she said yes, but I'm thinking she, she did. She had to have. I think she said yes. So what would you call that, Best, Logan? Uh, pr- assuming she said yes, it's the good stuff. And the sneezy stuff on 97.5 WOKQ. So we are giving away, according to Logan, whom I trust, a $50 gift card to Kittery Trading Post right now when we play Can't Beat Kira. If you'd like this $50 gift card to KTP, Christmas, Christmas shopping is right around the corner. You're going to need this. 603-749-0975 is our number. 603 603- Seven four nine zero nine seven five. Again, a fifty dollar gift card to Kittery Trading Post is up for grabs from ninety seven five WOK. It's the night. Think you've got what it takes? Oh yeah. Well, let's see. It's time to play Can't Beat Kira on ninety seven five WOKQ. Good morning, Jason. You're on with Kira and Logan in the morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, but it's really not about us. It's more about you, Jason. How was your weekend? It was really good. Uneventful. Uneventful. Sometimes those are the best. Uneventful. Do you just lounge around in your PJs? I'm not going to tell you what I lounge around in. Kira. I love him. I love him. Let's give him this gift card already. <laughs> just kidding. Jason, kick your out of here. Let's play, man. Kira, please leave. Okay. Thanks for saying please. Good luck. Wave to you like my fish does. Oh my All right. She's gone, Jason. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. This singer of What's Love Got to Do With It, Proud Mary and The Best, turns 85 tomorrow. Who is it? Oh, gosh. Think oh. think on it. Take take a breath. What's love got to do? Got to do with it. <sighs> do you know it? I want to say, I want to say Tina Turner, but I don't know. Let's, uh, let's just lock that in and go to question two, okay? All right. Question two. According to IMBD, don't shoot the messenger, this is the best Christmas movie of all time. It's multiple choice. Again, according to IMBD, is it It's a Wonderful Life, Die Hard, Elf, or National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. All right. Question number three. This is My Wish by Rascal Flatts. My wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. Your dreams stay big. Your worries stay small. You never need to blank. You never need to worry at all. Worry at all. All right, Kira's coming back in. Don't worry at all. Jason, how are we feeling? What's our confidence level looking like? Uh, I'm okay. I'm just happy to talk to you guys. I don't mind. Oh, good guy, Jason. Good guy, Jason, who spent the weekend in the nude. 
<laughs> That's what Kira well, was thinking about that whole time we were playing. I was. Really got Alleg- me through. Alleged- allegedly. Yeah. Okay. Allegedly. <laughs> Kira, the singer of What's Love Got to Do With It? Proud Mary and The Best turns 85 tomorrow. Who is it? What's love got to do? Uh. Um. Big whiz, keep on turning. <laughs> Oh, Mary, keep on burning. Why can't I think of this person? Rolling, rolling. Three. I'm not here. Okay, time's up. He's right. Well said, Jason. It's Tina Turner. Tina Turner. I, I thought Tina Turner died. It's Tina Turner. She's not. Wait, what? Tina Turner died. Okay. I was gonna. I, th- I was gonna say her, but I thought she was no longer with us. Hold on. No, Tina Turner's alive. What are you talking about? She is? Oh, no, Tina Turner died. Yeah, she would have been 85 today. Okay, that confused me. Okay, okay. Didn't confuse Jason. He got it right. He just knew. He was like, dead or alive, it's Tina Turner. That is true. Okay. One zero. All right. Question two. Kira, don't shoot the messenger. According to IMBD, this is the best Christmas movie of all time. Is it A, It's a Wonderful Life, B, Die Hard, C, Elf, or D, National Lampoon? Christmas vacation. Well, he said he said don't shoot the messenger, so that means he doesn't agree. National Lampoon. That is what Jason said. It's not. It's a Wonderful Life. Ah. Did you know that Die Hard's number two? Crazy. Crazy. Don't trust the internet. <laughs> Still one zip. Question number three. My wish, Rascal Flats. My, my wish, wish? Oh. for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. Should you just start singing now? No. Your dreams stay big. Your worries stay small. You never need to blank. Oh wow! <laughs> you were so confident when you were singing. Um, you never need to. Time's up. Time's up. Worry Canada. about me at all? Yeah, that's kind of what Jason said. The answer is you never need to carry more than you can hold. Mm. Final score: one Jason on a fluke question about someone who's already gone. <laughs> uh, R.I.P. Tina Turner. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, let's focus on that. But uh, Jason did win. Kira, you do need the phrase of shame to Jason. Okay, Jason, I'm going to say this to you now. My name's Kira. I'm from. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. Hello. So there's something on Logan's mind in regards to physical menus. He's a traditional guy. Yeah, I went out to dinner for my mom's birthday. Shout out, Vicky. Happy belated birthday. And me, it was the, me, my sister, mom, dad, and my Grammy. Oh, it's the OG crew? Yeah, yeah. And so I get there, and Grammy's got an iPad in front of her with a menu. And I'm like, oh, cool. Is there, <laughs> where are the actual menus? And my mom and dad, who were sitting there, they were there a couple minutes early, and they were pointing to the QR code Mm -hmm. on the table. And I was like, ah. My mom's like, what? I'm like, I just kind of want a menu. She goes, I know. That's why you can use Grammys. So, like, we're passing around this iPad because I I just don't want my phone. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I did it on my phone at at some point. But I get it. You're going to see, like, an angel and a devil here because I'm debating whether or not I like it or not. At first glance, I hate it. Give me a damn menu. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, like my sister, I hate to drag her through the mud, but I will. She always looks up what she wants before. Like um, when you sit down, you get the menu. It's the restaurant experience. It's experience, yeah. Yeah, and it's I true. get it. One thing that menus do is cause commotion on the table in the restaurant that we were at. Teeny, teeny, tiny tables. Okay. So like I get it. Like when you have four menus and a drink menu and a special menu on the table, a lot of stuff getting knocked over, glasses and stuff. I just don't like to have my phone out when I'm out at dinner. I feel that way too. And and everybody at one point, we're all looking down on our phones. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Isn't this what we're trying to not do? Yeah. Like we want to look at each other in the eyeballs and what, like actually connect. What's your take? Would you prefer actual menus or phone menus? I'm a little split too. I made a little pros and cons list. Okay. So I like the fact that it's better for Mother Earth. I yep. went somewhere recently. I don't want to say the place, but they were like, you know, what's best about our menus. We, um, we don't have to clean it. They're made of paper. They throw out all the menus. That's so I waste. think that's really wasteful. Yeah, yeah. I hate to see that. Um, I also I like that you are in charge of your own destiny. And by that, I mean, like we've all been out to drink. You order one drink. And then you finish that and you're like, I want something different. But they already took the drink menu. So then you have to say to the server, can you bring back the drink menu so I can make another choice? If it's on your phone, then you can already just like look and make that decision. And then when she comes back. So I like being in charge of my own destiny. But like you said, Stephen and I do a lot of phone free dates or I'll be phoneless. And then I have to share his phone with him. Right, to look at the menu. Yeah, in order to order. So it's tough. It's tough. I'm leaning more towards... I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, and then also, like, how many times it's like, 
I don't have service. Oh, I do. Not one person who has service has to ha- oh, hand yeah. their phone to everyone in the damn circle. Right. Don't bring service into it because that's another obstacle. Just feels like there are more obstacles than not to do the QR code. And like you said in the old teaser it was in, in the COVID days, mm. that's what we had to do because it was right. like less touching. And, and I think it just became mainstream and kind of easier for the restaurants, to it's be definitely, honest. It's definitely easier for the restaurant. There, there's no doubt about that. And, like, truthfully, it doesn't really take away from my dining experience. Not really, which mm. is probably why they're doing it. But I just, uh, like you said, I'm a traditional guy. Give me a damn menu. Mm, I kind of like that Grammy had the iPad, though. That feels like a boss move. She's yeah. like, I need big text. I need to see what I'm, I'm yeah. getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right there with her. I have to, when I am zooming on the menu, it's like, it's work out here. Yeah. Yes. Do menus. Do menus. We want to know what you think. If you have an opinion that's passionate, obviously we're a little uh, on both sides here. You can shoot us a message always on our 97.5 WOKQ app. We are curious to know what you think. And I don't know if you've heard, but we are giving away an all expenses paid trip to see Morgan Wallen. Ever heard of him? At the first annual Sand in My Boots Festival in Alabama, baby. And that is kicking off this morning. Your first contest code is happening at 820 on 97.5 WOK. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. Okay. It's time for a brand new episode of Second Date Update. Are you ready? Great. Let's go. So you went out on a date. It felt really right Should have locked that thing down Now they're nowhere inside Was it what you said? You were left on red It's not fair, it just ain't right Yeah, you want a second date Kira and Logan are here to help you That's right Welcome in, Grace Hi Hi, so you're on Kira and Logan in the morning We're trying to help you with our segment Second date update So what's going on with Nick? Fill us in well, currently he seems to be ghosting me. Um, the nerve! We, <laughs> I know. We met online through an online dating app, and he was so cute, and he lived in the Manchester area, which is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. So perfect. I figured, why not chat that chat him up, you know? And we chatted on the app for about a week, and then we moved to texting because I usually keep a buffer there for the crazies. That's and he smart. Made it around yeah. Too. And so I wanted to feel him out before going on a real date with him. Um, and the one thing that we found out that we have in common is we're both night owls. Okay. So we. So what time do you go to bed? Early. Oh, I don't go to bed earlier than 1 a.m. Oh, wow. Like, I can lay down a little earlier, but I'm not going to sleep before 1. Did you guys have, like, a late night date kind of thing? Yeah. We ended up um, going out to party on a Saturday night at the bars. Um cool. We had a great time. We hit it really hard, though. Um, but it was so much fun. Um, it felt more like I was hanging out with some friends and just having a really good hangout than a date, which is really what I wanted. I didn't want it to have the pressure of a date. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I assumed that we had a great time and we would just continue going out and having fun. I mean, it was so fun. And then he has not hit me up since. He's completely ghosted me. Interesting. So you mentioned that it felt more just like a friend hang, which you felt like was a good thing. But do you think maybe he put it in the friendship category too and maybe slid you into the friend zone? Well, not because we had so much fun bar hopping and we were holding hands and whatnot. Like, oh, there was some affection. The yeah, friend thing. Like, yeah, we don't, we weren't like on a date, but we were kind of date-ish. Yeah, and I honestly, from from all the my friends who are in long-term relationships, I feel like every time I hear about their meet, meet cute, it's less romantic sparks flying and more convenience, ease, and fun, which is what this date sounds like. Yeah, I thought it was great, and now he won't contact me back, and I'm I'm kind of bummed out. That's it. We're on it. I don't like to hear you this way. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, we got it really you. really sucks. I had a free time. How oh, dare this Nick guy? What's going to happen now is we're going to get him on the line, and we're going to demand answers. We're going to see why he's not responding to your attempts to reach out, and hopefully it's a big, fat misunderstanding, and we can send you on a second date that we, the radio station, would pay for. How's that sound, my friend? That sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for your help. Well, don't thank us yet, but we will do everything we can. Everything in our power. Good luck. Second date update on number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. The time is now for part two of second date update. All right, we did it. We got Nikki on the line. Nikki, you still there? Yes, I am. 
A little timid. That's okay. We understand you're here for second date update. You know that. What the heck's the deal with Grace? It sounded like you guys had, you know, some stuff in common. And then you guys went on a date and you're holding hands. And she said you guys had the best time. Like she said it was a fun night out, but you completely ghosted her. How come? Well, you know, I feel like I got hustled a little bit by Grace. You got hustled? Tell me more. I, well, you know, I got to know her for, you know, two weeks. And she was becoming like my person, you know? Sure. And that's nice. It was just the way it was the way she talked, what she likes. It was like she was a homeboy, kind of, but with you know, gorgeous girl fashion. So, like a fr- you're saying, like she was acting like a friend to you, but you had the benefit of a beautiful woman. Yeah, it was like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So, what's the problem? Yeah, what's no, the issue? <laughs> Here's the issue: the second bar that we went to, Grace got a little distracted. Did she get too drunk? Um, no, not drunk. It, it was another issue. She was talking to a girl, and, you know, I went over and introduced myself, and that's when she hit me with, you know, hey, yeah, this is an old girlfriend of mine. And I was like, didn't think it'd be a thing of it first, you know? Like, okay, like a friend. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then she completely forgot about me and was talking to her the whole time. Okay. Then I saw them touching hands, getting intimate, and I was like, oh, Crap, this is a real ex-girlfriend. Yeah, this girlfriend. isn't a girlfriend. This is a girlfriend girlfriend. I was like, uh-oh. So, <laughs> uh-oh. two issues with it. She didn't tell me she was bi or previously gay, and she pretty much ignored me to talk to her ex. Like, she was using me to make her jealous. All right, checks out, checks she out. She was kind of playing games a little bit. Yeah, I felt like the... I felt like I was being used in the middle of, of like this battle for her ex or something. It didn't feel right. And it is tricky because, you know, if you knew it was an ex, you know, maybe you would have done something different. But at first, you just thought it was like a, a former friend of hers. So you were like, oh, she's hanging out with her her pal, right? Yeah, I just thought it was an, like an old friend that she was catching up with. I was like, okay, cool. No real or, no real worries. But when you know it's the ex, that's a whole different bag of issues. True. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Nick, here, here's an issue for you. We didn't tell you that Grace is on the other line. Uh, she did hear everything you said, and we're going to bring her in and just see what she has to say, okay? Absolutely. I want to I want to clear this up. All right. Okay. Uh, Grace, are you there? Is this your ex-girlfriend, girlfriend, or just an ex-friend? What's the deal with this, Chica? Listen, I want to start off by saying who cares if I was gay or bi or whatever before, which, by the way, I'm not bi. I'm straight. Like, obviously, I'm over here trying to date men, so I'm straight. But, yes, I dated my friend Megan. She was at the bar. We dated for six years, but it's over. Well done and over. Um, I just, I don't understand how that's even an issue because I told you it was my you know, girlfriend from before. I'm sorry if you misunderstood that, but I don't feel it necessary in this day and age to sit here and go through the history of my sexuality with everybody. I think you're a little out of line for that, and I think we had a great time. I really don't understand. Whoa. Well said. Okay, well, you should have given me that information before, like sexuality or not. You can say whatever you want. That's clearly by in my book. But having that information that that's your ex would have been really great to know beforehand and not just feel like I was getting used to, you know, intimidate her or whatever. Well, just because you don't understand the difference in gay and bi and you're so confused right now doesn't mean that I did anything nefarious or wrong. Like, that's on you. I really was clear and upfront with you and I didn't tell you that, I, like, my sexuality labels from before, but I told you that was my girlfriend from before. Grace sounds a little upset, so I just want to kind of clear the air that I feel like it's not an issue of you being labeled bi or the fact that you dated a woman in the past, like, you know, sexuality is fluid. We do all know that in 2024, but it was that you were kind of, it's, yeah, it sounded like rekindling with an ex right in front of Nick. And maybe that was more of the problem. And there's absolutely no oh, chance that me and Megan are ever getting back together. Like, I don't understand why you would ever think that. I mean, we were together for six years. That's crazy. First of all, that, that six year relationship, okay, pretty much makes you gay. But, Secondly, oh, he is labeling. When I saw okay. you touching her and flirting with her. What? What do you want me to think about that? I'm a friendly person. That wasn't flirting. What I did with you was flirting. Hey, so wouldn't you want to know if I was gay for six years and started holding hands with a guy, you know, touching him while on our date, and flirting around and making you feel like this? Lee, I mean, it would probably be something I would ask you about during the date, but I don't understand. Like, no, it wouldn't bother me if 
you were gay before me. Like, we're in a separate timeline here. That's valid. Valid and well said. Uh, I think Kira and I are going to interject, guys, just because I feel like feelings are getting hurt, and, and whether we intend to or not, I feel like um, it's going down sort of a judgmental path, and we don't want that at all. That is not our intention here on yeah. Second Date Update ever, so. It doesn't sound like you two are made for each other, and that's A-OK. -okay. That's how it goes. We are still going to offer you, Nick, uh, to go on a second date with Grace that we pay for. Nick, are you interested in that? On the chance that she may run into another ex, no, no, thank you. Okay. All right. We uh, definitely saw that coming. Thank you both for your time. We really appreciate it, and best of luck on your dating journeys. Thank you, guys, thank for you. your... Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Okay, so on Friday, after I left work, I ran into a little bathroom dilemma. Don't worry, Logan, it's not disgusting. It was just a matter of, what do I do with my child in this public place? So let me paint the picture for you. Okay. Um, I'm at Hannaford, and Gwen is in the period of time where she likes to sit, like, in the shopping cart yep. in the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. we used to just have her in the car seat, but she really likes to, like, scream at all the cans, and she gets more attention this way, so that's where she likes to sit. So... We're, uh, we're going around, we're doing our thing at Hanford. I'm like, I really gotta pee. And normally I would just suck it up, but I was just like, I really have to pee. And I see that it's very crowded. So not only after my grocery shopping, I'm gonna have to wait in this long line. Well, I'm gonna make myself miserable. I just have to pee. Sure. So I'm like, what do I do with this here one-year-old? Because I can't, she can't walk. Right? So I can't bring her into the bathroom with me and she just stands there while I go. That's not an option. I'm not going to bring her in with me and she crawls around on the bathroom floor. We're not doing that. That's disgusting. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to pass her off to someone and say, can you hold my baby while I pee? So, <laughs> Can I ask a dumb question? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, don't get mad. Is that, is that just hard? Just hold it? Just hold her. Hold her while I pee. You, yes. I mean, you're only going to pee. It's going to be about a minute. I know you can hold Gwen up for a minute. I know it's going to be kind of awkward. You're sitting down in the toilet. She's in your, uh, you know, on your she left arm. She weighs 22 pounds. She's yep. not a tiny child. I know, but you're also sitting when you pee, uh, presumably. You're, right? So, I'm going to un unbutton my own pants, pull my pants down. How am I going to wipe? With one hand? What do How you mean? How am I going to tear the toilet paper? Rip it. I, I guess I'm the... I guess I, I hear you. I hear you. I, this is definitely a predicament. That shouldn't be my option. W what is the other option? Well, this is what I did. What? I brought the the whole shopping cart into the bathroom with Shut me. Shut the front door. What else was I supposed to do? Uh, again, again, here I, I'm not. I'm not even. <laughs> the shopping cart. I'm sorry. It's so funny. I would die if I saw someone. Also, I didn't don't they know have what signs? else to do. They have signs that said, don't bring merchandise in there. But really. Well, I, if someone you... approached me, I would say, I don't know what to do with my child. Here, if I gave you a 20-pound dumbbell, mm -hmm. you you couldn't sit down on the toilet with it for, for a minute and then rip one couple squares of toilet paper off? and Like, I think you could. I probably could, Yeah, but I didn't want to do that. Okay. I didn't think that that was the best option. Yeah, I guess or that... Or most comfortable for her. She got to sit. Like, she didn't care. She was in the car. I, I brought her in the big, I big stall. Believe, I cannot believe you <laughs> took a shopping cart into a bathroom. I know. I don't feel good about it, but I didn't feel like I had an option. Anyway, that's... that. You asked what I would do. That's what I would have done. I, I think that you could also... It's a little also easier for you. To... I'm putting myself in the perspective of sitting. Okay. You okay. Know, cause you, and that makes it easier, if you ask me, because you don't have to hold her. You're sitting. You're putting. You're letting her, hers rest on your leg while you're doing the damn thing. Okay. First of all, I'm not going to sit. I'm going on the Hannaford public toilet. Okay. Like. I don't know what to tell you then. Yeah, that's why. It's, that's why it's a dilemma and worth discussing, don't you think? I suppose. I you, suppose. You, you feel like it's very obvious. I want to get a twenty pound dumbbell and and twenty two. Okay, 22-pound dumbbell, and watch you do this. I think that you would go, okay, this was a lot easier. It's not easy. Okay. <laughs> I would do it, and I could do it, but there it's it not is. easy, and it cannot be. that. That's the option? Seriously? I don't. That's what I would assume is the only option, yeah. Okay, you listening, have you ever been in this predicament? And I think a lot of people would just be like, I would hold it. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If that's not an option, though, in this that, conversation. It didn't feel like an option in this situation. 603-749-0975. When your kid is in the mode where they can't walk yet, but they're not little enough, that I would just bring the car seat if she was little enough. I would just bring that and put it on the bathroom floor. That was also not an option. 603 
Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ, or Kira and Logan in the morning. On Friday after work, I ran into a bathroom dilemma. I was shopping at Hannaford with baby Gwen, and uh, I really had to pee. It was very crowded, and I knew that I was going to have to wait in line. I was like, I'm going to put myself through this. I got to go to the bathroom. But she sits in the shopping cart, and uh, she can't walk yet. She's the only one. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do with my child while I pee? And uh, I just rolled the entire shopping cart into the bathroom with me. And uh, that was fine. So nobody reprimanded me for it. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I really didn't feel like I had any other options. So 603-749-0975. What should I have done? What would you have done? What do you think? Nicole from Epping. What do you think, Nicole? Um, I have always just held my children on my lap before he even said it. I thought, you just hold them. I've even done it in my home when I've had like a stage nine clinger. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You unbutton your pants. And with your yeah. with, with one hand with one hand it takes some um, some practice dexterity but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, Kira, I think that once you do this like a few times you'll be like oh that is way easier than i thought mm. i don't you feel it like there should be another necessity. option though in a public place yeah i some of the bathrooms have those drop down things where you can seat your kids in it yeah but then I'm always feeling like whose kid was in it and do I have to wash it before I put mine in it? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they grab the strap. So Yeah, and they're few few and far between. Like most stalls don't have that. Right, right. All right, so so one hand unbutton, one hand wiping, one hand holding the kid and rest it on the lap. I like it. Thanks for the call, Nicole. Yep, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye okay, it's time to give away this $50 gift card to Kittery Trading Post. Would you like this? We are playing a battle of pop culture wits. We like to call Campy Kira. Our number is 603-749-0975. 603-749-0975. Hey! Think you've got what it takes? Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. It's time to play Can't Beat Kira on 97.5 WOKQ. Good morning, Danielle. How you doing? Hey, how are you? We're good. We choose you to play Can't Beat Kira today. Oh, super cool. I've played before. <laughs> super <laughs> cool. cool. That's great. <laughs> then you've probably kicked Kira out before, and I need you to do it again. All right, Kira. Step on out. I'm going to get to step in. Good luck. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. All right, Danielle, she's gone. You ready? All right, I'm ready. Question number one. Multiple choice. Where did cheesecake okay. originate? Was it Italy, Greece, or Wisconsin? Um, I'm going to go with Italy. Okay. Question number two. Also multiple choice. The average American consumes how many calories at a Thanksgiving dinner? Is it 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, or 2,500? Oh, 2,500, because that's going to be me. <laughs> that's going to be you. Question number three, film the lyrics, Jelly Roll, I am not okay. I know I can't be the only one who's holding on blank. Um, uh, hold on, let me see one more time. Sing it out. Oh, wait, you need my the lyrics again? Yeah, let's do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> I know I can't be the only one who's holding on blank. For dear life. All right, here's coming back. Great job. Okay. I mean, maybe there's the answer. I can't tell you. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to. Okay. All right, Danielle. She's back in the room. We'll see how Kira matches up. Kira, are you ready? I am. Kira, multiple okay. choice. Where did cheesecake originate? Mm. Italy. Greece. Wisconsin. Oh, that's it. I thought there was another one. No, just three. Okay. Um, Cheesecake. I feel like it, it was Italy. What was the second one? Greece, Greece. or Wisconsin. I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say Italy. Italy is what you said is what Danielle said. Greece was the answer we were looking for. Rats, rats, rats. Zero, zero. All right. We're All right. still even. All right. Okay. She's That's still it. in this. Yep. Question two. Kira, multiple choice again. The average American consumes how many calories at a Thanksgiving dinner? 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. 2,000. 2,000 is correct. Danielle said 2,500 because she said that's how much she's going to eat. Get it, girl. <laughs> Fill that plate. One zip, Kira. Question three, Kira. I am not okay. Jelly roll. Uh -huh. I know I can't be the only one who's holding on blank. For dear life. Is correct. Kira got that right. Danielle got that right. Final score. Two, Kira. One, Danielle. Danielle, we do need the phrase of shame. All right. My name is 
Michelle. I'm from North Berwick, and I can't beat Kira. But it's a short week. It's a holiday week. We're feeling festive, flirty, fun. We're going to give you the gift card anyway. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. Earlier on the show, I was talking about the bathroom dilemma that I ran into at the grocery store on Friday. If you missed it, I'll paint the picture for you. Baby Gwen and myself are at Hannaford's. She's sitting in the little grocery cart seat, and I got to pee. I got to pee bad. I can't wait until I get home. So I was like, what the heck do I do? Uh, I can't really bring this child in the bathroom and put her on the floor because that's disgusting and I'm not going to have that. Her crawling around, she can't walk yet. Otherwise, I'd say just stand here while I go pee. I felt like I was out of options. So I wheeled that whole grocery cart that I had right in the bathroom with me and I did my business and she just sat there like, oh, this is what we're doing now. She didn't really care. And uh, the people that worked there didn't care either. But I was like, is this my option? Is that is this what I was left to do? And um, Logan doesn't feel that way. Logan feels like I should have done a little one-handed business and held her, 22 pounds, by the way, um, while I peed, right? You, listen, I'm not passing judgment on what you did. You mm-hmm. asked me what I would do, and the only option in my head would be to hold her and put her, because you sit to pee. I don't. I would put her on my lap and do my best to pee, and mm-hmm. one hand unbutton my pants, one hand wipe, one hand everything else, and then, you know, you wash your hands with one hand, then you switch the baby so you can get the other hand with one hand. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I would do, because, because I, you know, you brought, you're bringing produce in the bathroom at Hannaford. It's, I didn't love it. I didn't love crazy. that that was what my life came to, but I said, I have no choice. I'm about to pee my pants. So, uh, what would you have done? 603-749-0975. Cindy, what do you think? So, Kira, not only did I do it, what you did but i did it with two kids and while i was in there i sang a song so i made sure that they were keeping occupied oh yeah you gotta serenade them always so you're saying you brought the shopping cart into the bathroom yeah yeah, yeah. and logan Yo. a 20 pound dumbbell won't move on your lap like a child would yeah we got a squirmy worm yeah no i i, I hear that cindy and definitely if you have two kids i mean you're kind of sol you gotta bring the shopping cart into to leave but with one I think that uh, an option could have been to just kind of hold that squirmy baby for 60 seconds. That's that's just what I was saying. Oh, my gosh. The 60 seconds would have turned into five minutes. I'm glad you have my back about bringing the card in. Like, nobody even bat in an eye, and I was like, this is so much easier. Yeah, it certainly is. So that is my opinion. Love Thank it. you, and I love your opinion, and I love that you called in. Okay. Bye, bye guys. Cindy. Tammy from North Berwick, what do you think? Good morning. I think... Um, Logan has never had a bladder after a baby. So when you got to go, you got to go. And you definitely can't. Does he realize you don't sit on the seat? You hover like you don't trust that paper. Stuff That's what I said. Put on the toilet. Yeah, you don't. I'm not going to like put all my weight and my baby's weight on that disgusting toilet seat. Yeah, no, you don't trust the paper and you're hovering. And a dumbbell is totally different than a moving child. Like, I don't know. No, I'm with you, Kara. You would have brought the card in? I have brought the card in, the handicap one. I know, so crossing all kinds of lines, I'm not handicapped, but (laughs) I I felt handicapped with the child in the cart and can't multitask like that. Yeah, no, I brought the card in the the, the handicap stall. Okay, so you did exactly what I did. Exactly. Okay, thank you. I feel validated. You are. Have a good day. Later. Bye. Candy from Manchester, what do you think? So, I've been in that position, so... I totally agree with Logan. I grabbed my kid, went into the bathroom, used a paper towel with soap and water, wiped the toilet seat down, and held my kid while I peed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have good de- dexterity. I'm impressed. That, back in that day, you had no choice. It wasn't like you could bring the grocery cart and nobody cared. Like They said no. Yeah. Uh, I was a little worried, but yeah. I just, I just kind of slid right in, and I was ready to get reprimanded <laughs> if it happened. <laughs> yeah. I give you credit, though, because I would have never, I would have been, no. <laughs> it was a lot easier than, um, you know, the uh, the circus act, the balancing circus yes. act. Right. And I think these days people are a lot less physical about what's, like, okay and what's not okay. Because, like, my kid's 35 now. So back then it was... The rules know. be the rules. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time. It's the 97.5 WOKQ Foss Motors Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Traffic Update. 
This report is sponsored by Lowe's. Plenty of light to busier traffic, but no reported crashes or delays. Is Black Friday buildup at Lowe's. Get up to 50% off select major appliances. Plus, take an additional 10% off when you buy other select major appliances. Valid 11.6 through 12.4. Cannot be combined with additional discounts. See Lowe's.com for details and qualifying items. While supplies last. I'm Gina Genesis, New Country, 97.5 WOKQ Traffic. Number one. WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. Sorry about that. That was a little funky. Buttons got away from me. So we were just talking about the dilemma that I faced on Friday at Hannaford's. I'm shopping around with baby Gwen in my cart and all of a sudden the bladder strikes. I'm like, I am not going to make it till I get home. I need to relieve my bladder and I need to do it now. So I have little baby Gwen in the cart and I'm like, what the heck do I do? She can't walk yet, so I can't say, st- um, stand here. You know, while, I, while mommy goes to the bathroom, I'm not going to let her crawl around the disgusting bathroom. I just wheeled the whole cart into the bathroom with me. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. I felt like that was my only option, personally. 603-749-0975. What do you think, Jill? I think Logan needs to try and pee with the baby and see what he does. Because it is not the easiest thing in the world yeah. when you're in the bathroom. You, I am happy they let you take that card in. I would never, I never tried that. But to pee with a baby is the worst in the storm. Yeah, listen, I, I have a question for you. Um, have you done it? Yes. Yeah, right. So, so, but it, but it can be done. You know what I mean? So, like that, 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 I'm not saying that it's it's easy by any means. But you know, Kira asked what I would have done. I would have struggled with the baby and done my best to empty as much of my bladder as I could before I brought my cart with produce into the bathroom. Well, okay, produce, yes. But sometimes you got to do what you can do. It is not the easiest. I they now have the little thing where you can strap the kid in, and I do that. And I did that in the stall. My kids are older. My daughter is eight, and she's not even allowed to leave the stall until I'm ready to leave the stall. Right. It is the heart because even if they're crawling around the floor, they could get out for from sure underneath the stall. Hundred percent. It is the hardest thing. Like I, I, I never thought to do that here. And I, when you said that, I'm like, wow, that is so smart. Just bring the cart with you. Yeah, and, um, you know, since Logan keeps saying bringing produce into the bathroom, really harping in on that, I didn't have produce at that point. I had just kind of entered the store, evaluated my bladder, and was just like, I probably had, like, a box like or, or a bag of Tostitos at that point. Yeah. And I was like, I need to go to the bathroom before I go shopping type of thing. Take it all with you. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the best decision for myself and my child. Exactly. You Again, know, I think it, it is the hardest decision to make when you have to go to the bathroom in a public restroom. She was happy as a clam sitting there in the cart. And um, <laughs> if I was trying to balance her and she's like squirming out of my naked lap, like, no, that's not good for either no. of us. No, not at all. So I I would never have thought to do that. I mean, my son's three, my daughter's eight. So, I, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I I'm not being a bad influence and there's going to be like a problem at Hannaford and Market Basket now of just moms like wheeling carts into bathrooms. Um, but yeah, I say if you got to do it, you got to do it. Exactly. Good well, thanks for, for taking the time to chime in. Absolutely. You guys have a great day. Happy yeah, you Thanksgiving. Too. Later. Yeah, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Okay, yes, Logan. I have, a question. I have a question for you. Yeah. Have you gone to the bathroom with Gwen on your lap and she's, what, like 13 months a year? Um, I haven't, no. You haven't? Or maybe I have at home when she was little, like little, 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 yeah. in the middle, feeding her in the middle of the night when she weighed like 10 pounds. Yeah, I guess... You know, to to your original question of like, what would I have done? I would have assumed that by now you would have been in this predicament before Mm -hmm. and have would would be comfortable and practiced going to the bathroom with her on your on your lap. Like I I would have assumed that by uh, how old is she? 13, 14 months. She's 13. Yeah. So I would have assumed that this has already happened. And, And once you do it like a few times, I could do it. Um, I have done it like at my house when she's w- weighed less, but yeah, yeah. she's he- she's pretty heavy now. She's pretty squirmy now. Sure. And uh, it would in the bathrooms. I, I wouldn't really want to sit on that toilet seat. So then I'm hovering, and yeah. then the quads are burning. Sure, it's a whole thing. Okay, it's a whole workout. Ba- quads are burning, baby's heavier. This is a weight thing. This is a weight thing. It might be a weight. Maybe I need to train. Maybe I needed to train for this moment in my life, and I'm simply not trained up for it. That could be it. That could be it. Because we're getting a lot of messages of uh, moms that have ba- you know balanced several children on their lap while uh, true. While going to the bathroom. Did you read uh, Kat's message? Is I haven't got to it yet, but I saw it coming through. Okay, yeah. She basically said that uh, when my first daughter, when my daughter was first an infant, I learned to put put her on my lap. I used to wake up in the middle of the night to feed her, and sometimes you have to poop, and you can't wait 
Uh, so you learn how to pull things down and do your business while feeding with one hand while baby's on the on the lap. And that, my friend, is multitasking. Proud of you, Kat. I'm proud of you. Well, thank you for all the advice. Um, yeah, until I get in trouble, I'll probably be wheeling that cart in. Well, but pretty soon she'll be able to walk and I'll say, stand there, my love. Mm. Uh, we have that, uh, not Kane Brown, Morgan Wallen contest code. That's coming up next on 97.5 WOKQ. Have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto? Make sure you have our app so when you connect your device, we can go everywhere together. Details. WOKQ, Dover, Portsmouth, Rochester. Hi, it's Kira and Logan in the morning. Would you like to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two to Alabama to Morgan Wallen's inaugural Sand in My Boots event? Yeah, I said inaugural. This is your first contest code. Let's go. Hey, what's up? It's Morgan Wallen. I'm me, man. You get what you get through my music. If you talk to me, I'll always be the same. That's oh, it, that's Logan. Time. It's that's, time to say it. That's the <laughs> intro. Two, two, one. At uh, that Morgan Wallen contest code, 221. Enter that in the 97.5 WOKQ app. It is 221. And guess who has that next contest code? It's Ginny Rogers, and it happens this morning at 1020 on your number one for new country, 97.5 WOKQ. It's Old Dominion. If I could buy a house on memory lane, I'd put my money down and I'd sign my name on that little corner lot where it don't ever rain. Stay good as new, like a fresh corner paint. You'd be mine in the shine of the front porch light. Yeah, I might as well live there, baby. That's where I spend most of my time. Thinking about those sunsets that bled in the jean jacket nights. Those tangled up mornings lost in paradise. Still drunk on Makes the workday tolerable. Jeannie Rogers. Bingo. She is 30 minutes of nonstop country for your workday starting at 10 on 97.5 WOKQ. Baby girl, you out your mind, you way too good for me. Thinking about the day we met, you could have just ignored me. Here I am, laying next to you, looking extra cute in the morning. Looking back all through the past, everything before you was boring. You're the type, people wishing they'd sit next to you on a flight. Top of list, who I want to watch up on an island with. You're the dream, even if we're counting girls in magazines. It's still a mystery. What's someone as beautiful as you?
you could just fall out of the blue when you're walking around in my sweater girl there's no bed of you spend the rest of forever just treasuring you oh i follow you wherever and you know that's the truth yeah you're the type people wishing they sit next to on a flight drop a list who i want to spend like every second with you're the dream even if we're counting girls up on the screen still a mystery was someone as beautiful Did you miss that Morgan Wallen contest code? Oh, we're 97.5 WOKQ. This is Kira and Logan in the morning. You know what? It's the first day that we're doing it. You're still getting in the motion of it. So uh, Logan said he would repeat it now. It is 221. That Morgan Wallen contest code is 221. Enter that in the 97.5 WOKQ app right now. I can't sleep. Ain't no sleep or coming. I'm just lying here thinking about you. I'm in deep. Falling deep into the picture in my mind of everything we're gonna do Over at the lake and down by the river you can feel it start to rise I wanna jump in my car, go wherever you are Cause I need you by my side It's gonna be a long time
Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. So I just learned that this is a thing, but I'm guessing it's been around for a long time. The Butterball Turkey Hotline. What the heck is this? 1-800-BUTTERBALL. You can call it from now until, like, apparently a few days before Christmas, and there are 50 turkey cooking experts on standby, ready to guide America- Americans through their turkey cooking crisis. Christ- Wait, do they do this through Christmas or Thanksgiving? Well, it's for Thanksgiving. But Could I think they do it through Christmas? I think people maybe cook turkey um, for Christmas as well. I think it's Even a though ha- I thought that was a goose. That's a ham holiday. It's a ham holiday or yeah. a goose. So I don't know why they're standing by. Um, but anyway, that's cool. So 50 experts and you can call and, and just be like, hey, is my turkey done? And they'll tell you. I kind of love this. Yeah. Mm. I kind of love that in this day and age where like you could Google just about anything. Like the answer to any question is at our fingertips. People are still calling in the Butterball Turkey hotline yeah. to get guidance through their turkey. I know. You're going to ask him for like whoever answers. You're going to ask him for his sources. But how do you know? What's your? Have you been cooking turkey for the past thirty years? Because that's, I, that's I, a good I need, question. What is expert. your? Yeah. What is your? Uh, what's your criteria? Like, right. what is your? What is your experience? I'm mean, gonna need to see your resume. Right. Well, if you're wondering what they're asking most commonly, it's a. Uh, it's exactly what you would think. How to thaw a turkey is the most popular question the hotline Just gets. Just breathe on it, I think. <sighs> yeah. No, that's it. Um, hands down, Butterball recommends two ways to thaw a turkey: in the fridge. Checks out. Thaw- thawing a frozen turkey takes a long time, so doing it in the refrigerator over the course of a week is the preferred method. However, these people in panic mode Can calling do one cold a- water. Yeah, exactly. Oh, baby, I'm good. Yeah, that's, I'm a butterball expert. That's like if you called today, they yeah, would yeah. tell you because you're out of time. You, right. you don't have that kind of time for the fridge thawing. So yeah, this is the method for people, like Logan said, in cold water. Um, they advise letting the turkey sit for around 30 minutes per round. Ooh, this is a lot of heavy lifting. You have to change that water every half hour, making sure it's cold enough that the turkey stays below 40 degrees. Huh. That's a lot. And then how to tell that your turkey is done. The answer is with a meat thermometer. Internal temp of 160? 170? Oh my One si- what is it? 170? 170. Oh! Um, and then, wait, it says we want the breast to reach 170 and the thigh to reach 180. Of course. Uh, but, but of course. And then also people are just calling, how do I cook a turkey? Honey, <laughs> honey, you just you bought a turkey and then you're asking the experts at Butterball to really like handhold ha- your ha- way. Ha- hand on over to Market Bucket and pick up a rotisserie chicken. That's how. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The time depends on the size of the turkey and the guideline is 15 to 20 minutes Per pound at 325 degrees. Have you ever tried to cook a turkey? No, that's my dad's responsibility. It feels like a big responsibility. It is, and then you gotta you gotta do, you know do the basting, and you take it out, and you put the juices on top. Take it out, put the juices on top. Nope, I will never, never, ever, wow, be the turkey guy. If a Thanksgiving or some kind of holiday is up to me. I would be getting takeout. Seriously? Yeah. You're never going to cook a turkey. I you will. I, I feel like you'd be up for the challenge. I don't want to. You know what I would do is the fried <laughs> turkey, but I've seen so many videos of those things catching fire. It's not even worth it. Yeah, that's true. Good luck cooking your turkeys this year. Godspeed. Neither of us are putting ourselves in that position. The good stuff is next on 97.5 WOK. <laughs> Feeling you feeling good? We are. The good stuff is brought to you by Merchants Auto. 1,000 vehicles, 26 acres, merchantsauto.cars. So two stories for the price of one. The first one takes place in Watertown, Massachusetts. So this woman was walking along, like downtown Watertown, and she looked down in her engagement ring and the diamond was gone. Oh, boy. And that's tragic all on its very own, but it was a family heirloom oh, ring. Terrible. In her family for generations. So she was really upset. Yeah, yeah. And she's like retracing her steps. And then it was kind of a ding, ding, ding moment that she felt like it might have fallen into one of those public recycling bins that they have on the sidewalk. Stop. What do you do? So she was pretty much coming to terms with the fact that it gone but she was like i have to at least try sure so she called the town she got in touch with the (laughs) recycling 
Whoa. Sorry. Are you all right? Bless me. Thank you. Bless you. That's, Carry on. If you're sneezing on the air, you're going to sneeze no less than 30 times today. Kara knows. It's going to be a sneezy day it's for Logan. It's going to be a sneezy day. So she got in touch with Watertown, Massachusetts. Recycling chief, his name is Matt. And um, they oh. met. Oh, I'm sorry. My I'm God. sorry. I'm sorry. Keep going. And they met up and they started digging through their recycling bin. Yeah, yeah. And she's getting really defeated. And he's like, he's like positive the whole time. He's like, you wouldn't believe what we find for people. Like, don't give up hope. Like, yeah. this guy is like a ray of freaking sunshine. And then, show enough. Positive words became positive actions. They found this teensy weensy diamond in the recycling bin. How long bin. did it take? Do you have any clue? It doesn't say. I just can't imagine how long. I mean, like, it, I don't know when I would throw the towel in. Yeah, it seems I, like they stuck with it. Like, yeah, there were moments I wanted to give up. I feel like after about 30 minutes, it's almost like, all right, we're looking for a needle in a haystack here. Literally. But, yeah, they found it, and the story got shared on um, on Facebook, and then people started fi- um, piling on, like, Matt's the man. He helped me find this when I lost it. Like oh, wow. he's like, this guy's known for? He's like a hero. He's like huh. a town hero. Cool. So we love to hear that. Um, my next story is about Swifties. So this guy named Mike... Uh, loves a girl named Callie, and Callie is a die-hard Swifty fan. Okay, um, but like obviously they're not Oprah, so they only had um, they only had plans to see the Eras tour once in Pittsburgh, sure. like that's where they live. And then they kind of traveled around and hung out in the parking lot and sang along like a lot of people do. Oh, my God. People do that. I, I know, but I just can't imagine having the time. I know. I know. Nor the dedication. So a news station, like, found out their dedication around this this uh, Eras tour and her love of Taylor Swift. So they're like, you deserve to see her one more time. Sent them to Toronto um, cool. on Friday. Nice. And um, Tay-Tay's up on stage playing Love Story. And that is when Mike slipped on Callie's wrist a friendship bracelet and said, asked her to marry him. Wow. So was this part of his plan? I think it became part of his plan when they found out they were going to another wow. era's yeah, tourist yeah, yeah. stop. And then when Tay-Tay sang, marry me, Juliet, he dropped to his Shocker. knee. Yeah. Seen that a time or two. Have you? Yeah. When have you been to a Taylor Swift concert? I don't have to go to a Taylor Swift concert to see what people put on the internet, just like you saw this story. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. The internet is a place for everybody. Uh, so that happened, and I actually didn't see if she said yes, but I'm thinking she, she did. She had to have. I think she said yes. So what would you call that, Logan? Best, uh, assuming she said yes, it's the good stuff. And the sneezy stuff on 97.5 WOK. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are here on Logan in the morning. Hello. So there's something on Logan's mind in regards to physical menus. He's a traditional guy. Yeah, I went out to dinner for my mom's birthday. Shout out, Vicky. Happy belated birthday. And me, it was the, me, my sister, mom, dad, and my Grammy. Oh, it's the OG crew? Yeah, yeah. And so I get there, and Grammy's got an iPad in front of her with a menu. And I'm like, oh, cool. Is there, <laughs> where are the actual menus? And my mom and dad, who were sitting there, they were there a couple minutes early, and they were pointing to the QR code mm-hmm. on the table. And I was like, ah. My mom's like, what? I'm like, I, I just kind of want a menu. She goes, I know. That's why you can use Grammys. So, like, we're passing around this iPad because I, I just don't want my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I did it on my phone at, at some point. But I get it. You're going to see, like, an angel and a devil here because I'm debating whether or not I like it or not. At first glance, I hate it. Give me a damn menu. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, like my sister, I hate to drag her through the mud, but I will. She always looks up what she wants before. Like um, when you sit down, you get the menu. It's the restaurant experience. It's experience, yeah. Yeah, and That's I true. get it. One thing that menus do is cause commotion on the table in the restaurant that we were at. Teeny, teeny, tiny tables. Okay. So like I get it. Like when you have four menus and a drink menu and a special menu on the table, a lot of stuff getting knocked over, glasses and stuff. I just don't like to have my phone out when I'm out at dinner. I feel that way too. And and everybody at one point, we're all looking down on our phones. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Isn't this what we're trying to not do? Yeah. Like we want to look at each other in the eyeballs and what, like actually connect. What's your take? Would you prefer actual menus or phone menus? I'm all split too. I made a little pros and cons list. Okay. So I like the fact that it's better for Mother Earth. I yep. went somewhere recently. I don't want to say the place, but they were like, you know what's best about our menus? We, um, we don't have to clean it. They're made of paper. They throw out all the menus. That's so I think waste. that's really wasteful. Yeah, yeah. I hate to see that. Um, I also, I like that you are in charge of your own destiny. And by that, I mean, like we've all been out to drink. You order one drink 
And then you finish that and you're like, I want something different. But they already took the drink menu. So then you have to say to the server, can you bring back the drink menu so I can make another choice? Yeah. If it's on your phone, then you can already just like look and make that decision. And yep. then when she comes back. So I like being in charge of my own destiny. But like you said, Stephen and I do a lot of phone free dates. Or I'll be phoneless, and then I have to share his phone with him in right, order to look to, at the menu. Yeah, in order to order, so it's tough. It's tough. I'm leaning more towards I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, and then also like how many times it's like oh, I don't have service. Oh, I do. Not one person who has service has to ha oh, hand yeah. their phone to everyone in the damn circle. Right. Don't bring service into it because that's another obstacle. Just feels like there are more obstacles than not to do the QR code. And like you said in the old teaser room, it was in, in the COVID days, mm. that's what we had to do because it was right. like less touching. And, and I think it just became mainstream and kind of easier for the restaurants, to it's be definitely, honest. It's definitely easier for the restaurant. There, there's no doubt about that. And, like, truthfully, it doesn't really take away from my dining experience. Not really, which mm. is probably why they're doing it. But I just, uh, like you said, I'm a traditional guy. Give me a damn menu. Mm, I kind of like that Grammy had the iPad, though. That feels like a boss move. She's yeah. like, I need big text. I need to see what I'm, I'm yeah. getting. Yeah, yeah. I'm right there with her. I have to, when I am zooming on the menu, it's like, it's work out here. Yeah. Yes. Do menus. Do menus. We want to know what you think. If you have an opinion that's passionate, obviously we're a little uh, on both sides here. You can shoot us a message always on our 97.5 WOKQ app. We are curious to know what you think. That is Morgan Wall and Love Somebody on your number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We are Kira and Logan in the morning. It is time for compliments, double downs, and apologies brought to you by Merchants Auto and Hooks in New Hampshire. Okay, I'm doubling down. Doubling down on what I was talking about, my bathroom dilemma. So I was at Hannaford on Friday after work with baby Gwen. Really had to pee. Like, really had to pee. Went from zero to about to pee my pants. And, um, Gwen is not in a position where she can walk yet. She's learning, but, you know, slow and steady. And so I didn't know what to do with her. And I just ended up wheeling the entire grocery cart into the bathroom. And it was totally fine. Nobody said anything. I know that's kind of frowned upon, but that's what I did. And I'm doubling down on my decision. I did it once. I would do it again. And I would actually encourage other people to do it. If you work at a grocery store, you're probably like, do not say that. That is not yeah. that is not okay. You're not supposed to take merchandise into the bathroom. But I felt like I really didn't have another option. So I'm doubling down on that. That is how I feel. And um, yeah, that's it. What do you think, Love Logan? It. I am going to be giving a compliment to Morgan Wallen, who put together the craziest festival of all time. I'm talking about the Sand in My Boots Fest that Kira and I are giving away uh, codes every, and, and Ginny. We're all doing it. We're all doing it. We're giving away uh, this experience to see this festival. We haven't even touched upon the lineup and I think we need to. Let's talk about it. Because obviously Morgan Wallen, Post Malone, Brooks and Dunn Hardy, right? Big country hitters. Uh, Riley Green, Bailey Zimmerman, but, and this is really where the compliment is. Morgan Wallen put together such a cool fest. Wiz Khalifa is going to be there. Two Chains, Three Six Mafia. Haven't heard them since middle school. Like a G six, right? Uh, three doors down. I mean, it's a really, really cool uh, festival, and I'm pumped that we're giving away tickets, flight, hotel, the whole nine yards. I'm so jealous. I, I don't even know if there's a way to get me down there, but I'm going to be figuring it out. We deserve to be there yeah. with that lineup. It's really, really cool. I'll be listening for your next codes from Ginny Rogers. She has that in about 25, 30 minutes. Yes, good luck to you. And the more codes you enter, the better your chances are to win. We always say that. It's kind of like a raffle. Well, enjoy the rest of your Monday. Logan and I will be back live tomorrow to talk to you. And uh, don't forget, all day long, who loves you? We do.